back for episode 4 of our Nissan 350Z project. We're back finishing what we started in the last episode, handling what's left of our suspension, brake, and chassis work. Last time we installed a set of coilovers, traction bars, camber arms, and front adjustable upper control arms. Today we're going to finish the job. We're going to be installing new sway bars, new brakes and slotted rotors, put a fresh coat of paint on our calipers, chassis bracing, and installing our exhaust. Enough of us talking, let's get going. We removed our front and rear sway bars to make room for the ST suspension sway bars. If you're turning into a corner and you feel like the car is floating almost like a boat, this may be a good mod for you. Having increased rates for both the front and rear are going to again stiffen up the suspension, reduce that body roll, giving your ride a more planted feel when you're playing on some valley roads or S turns on the track. The only tools we needed for the sway bar were a 16 millimeter socket and a ratchet. So far, we focus on how we're going to make the car go faster, but at some point, we also needed to stop. We chose to go with a set of R1 slotted rotors and their ceramic pads. The slotted rotors will help us dissipate some heat as well as some of the debris from the pads. The ceramic pads we chose are a good all-around pad for daily performance as well as having some fun on the track. The tools we needed for the brakes and rotors were a 14 millimeter socket, a wrench, and a piston compression tool. The tool we use to push back in the piston on the caliper is called a piston compressor. It allows the caliper to be installed easily and fit over the brake pads because we were able to push the piston completely in. We also wanted to make the calipers look a bit better, so we gave them a fresh coat of paint, which will make them pop behind our new set of wheels. This is obviously 100% cosmetic. We wanted to show you how easy it is to customize your ride a little bit more and how affordable it can be. The paint we use only costs about 25 bucks, and you saw how easy it was to apply. Just clean up the surface rust on the calipers, apply a few light coats. Make sure you choose a caliper paint that is heat resistant. There are special paints for metal, plastic, high heat areas, and so on. As long as you know the material you are working with, choosing paint at your local auto parts store should be pretty simple. Why did we pick gold? We felt the red paint and the silver wheels that gold would pop and go along with the theme of the car. Another reason is the factory Brembo brake option on these cars were gold as well, so it kind of ties into Nissan's original thoughts when designing the car. The reason for putting the car on the race ramps was one, we could get the car down on all four wheels and tires to check the fitment with the new suspension parts. Two, we knew we'd be laying under the car to put on the exhaust and the chassis bracing, so this gave us a bit more room. For the exhaust, we ended up going with Z1 single exit system. This should reduce some weight and maximize the exhaust flow, allowing our exhaust to easily escape through the mandrel bent tubing. On Z1's website, it is stated as being loud in capital letters, so hopefully we can wake some neighbors up with this thing. The tools we needed for the exhaust were just a 14 millimeter socket, a 16 millimeter socket, and a ratchet. The new exhaust was a lot easier to put in than the old one was to take out. When you're not working with rusted bolts and everything is new, it's just a matter of lining everything up and assembling it. New parts and bolts really make a difference. When we were finishing up the exhaust install, the muffler was lightly touching the rear bumper. This was an easy fix as we just had to slightly bend the final exhaust hanger and reattach it. 
We used our trusty stable rust stopper to help us lubricate the exhaust hangers that went a lot smoother after application. The exhaust comes with a silencer inside of the muffler so you can make the exhaust quieter or louder based on whatever your preference is. So we used an Allen wrench to remove the silencer because we prefer the car to be a bit louder. The piece isn't necessary for performance, so we just left it off. The point of the chassis bracing is to reduce the flex by reinforcing the weak point on the factory unit body. This makes the chassis more rigid, which helps us with handling around the corners. The tools needed for the chassis bracing are a drill and a 19 millimeter socket. We had to drill into the unibody to make a larger hole for the bolts on the back end of the chassis bracing to fit them through. Now it's secure and will help us a lot in how the car handles. We could drive the car right now, but we still have a lot of work we want to do. And we want to make sure all the parts are working in unison when we do the initial test drive. It is nice to see and it is very rewarding to see the parts go from boxes to old parts coming off the car, new parts going on, getting through some of the hurdles we've had along the way, to seeing a complete car come back to life. It's, uh, it's coming along. <laughs> That's it for today. We've now completed all the mechanical work and could technically take this car out on the road. But now we get to start working on the fun cosmetic modifications. Next episode, we're going to get into some of the aero work on the outside. We're going to be adding a front splitter, side splitters, some hood vents, and we'll also break down the choices you can make when it comes to some of the different ways you can style the exterior of your ride. For more on this car build or the latest on what's happening with Stable and 303, make sure to follow both on Instagram and Facebook and hit the subscribe buttons at the end of the video. Be sure to tune in for episode five coming up soon. Thanks for watching.